Hey, uh, welcome to an Edexcel paper one walkthrough. This is the 2018 paper. We're going to walk through just section A for this video. First question we're asked about the opportunity cost before and afterwards. So before we're told we produce at V. At V, we have to produce 50 capital goods. So because we have to produce 50 capital goods, we can no longer produce anything lower than 50 capital goods. We can no longer produce anywhere on this PPF. And because of that, we have also sacrificed the opportunity of producing any of these consumer goods. Therefore, the opportunity cost is all those consumer goods that we lost out because we had to produce 50 consumer goods. So that is 20 consumer goods, and that is the first opportunity cost. Next up, we're told that we're at U. And again, we're told that we have to produce 50 capital goods. So again, we can't produce anywhere on here that would be fewer capital goods than we need. And as a result, we are now only producing 140 consumer goods, and we cannot pr consume anywhere between 140 and 170. So we've sacrificed that difference. We've sacrificed the opportunity of making 30 consumer goods between that 140 and that 170. So to shift your PPF, to shift it like this, so it shifted kind of like that, uh, you want more factors of production or you want a higher productivity, better technology. And you can see that the is the answer with that. The other ones won't really shift, there'll be a movement in sight. So at point W, if you look there on, on the question, at point W, you're inside the PPF and anywhere inside the PPF is productively inefficient. You're not fully utilizing your resources. There could be unemployment or you just simply are not utilizing all their skills. To work out the weekly revenue after the tax, I split it in stages. First of all, I worked out the revenue, which is price times quantity. The price has been highlighted in green as two, and the quantity is 73 million. If you multiply these together, you get that the revenue is 146 million per week. Calculating the tax paid, how you calculate it, you do the tax charged per unit, which is 24 pence, times the units that were actually taxed, which is the units sold. So that is 24 pence times 73 million, which gives us 17.52 million. And then you do 146 million minus the 17.52, and then you see how much money you were able to keep after the tax. The cross elasticity of demand uh, equation is sometimes a bit tricky. Luckily, they, they kind of told us in the question what is involved. They told us that it's the price of lottery tickets changing. So that told me that was on the bottom of the equation. The question actually asked me for the yellow bit, which is the percentage change in the demand for gaming machines. So I rearranged the cross elasticity equation and I need to multiply the XED times the price percentage change. So the XED they gave that's as 1.28. And the percentage change in price I have calculated down here to be 100%. So I multiply these things together and I get that the demand should increase by 128%. Here a grant was given to a flood defense scheme. Immediately that should kind of ring non-rival, non-excludable. It's a public good. Public goods cause market failure because there's not any incentive to produce these in the market. So clearly we need flood defenses and this was something that the government had to provide. Here is an estate agent that got a commission of 1.3% of the £489,000 that they sold the house for. 1.3%, you can find that by doing 0 0.013 times the 489 and then you get the payment that was received by the agent. This one I found tricky the way they were phrasing it. Um, the way that I approached this, I wrote down the prices and I want to know how many times larger is a London house price compared to the Northeast. So what I did, I divided both sides by one to 7,000. And that told me that one 
house in the northeast, um, the London house price would be 3.8 times higher. That's my approach. Divide both sides to make it equal to one. The difference in house prices between London and North East England. Personally, I suggest that there could be higher demand for this. I don't know if you need to draw kind of the full diagram for this, but if it's helpful, doesn't take too long, that could be quite useful. Um, I've said here, more jobs in London mean greater willingness and ability to demand housing compared to the Northeast. So a greater demand leads to higher prices in housing. If this was a longer essay, you'd describe this in more detail, but that should be fine for, for the purposes of that one. Here we have Emily. Emily was previously profit maximizing. So if you're maximizing profits, you set quantity where MC is MR, which is there. This is the quantity. And Emily should charge the highest price that consumers are willing and able to pay, which is this price. And that's 17. To work out the profits that she made originally, I push it through this profit equation. Revenue minus costs. That can be simplified down to P minus AC times Q. And that means that the original price of 17 minus the costs, I look at the average cost curve is there is eight was originally times the units of 25 sold gives us the profits of 225. And after Emily has changed to revenue maximization, the quantity is now 36. The average costs are now nine and the price is now 12, giving her a profit of 108. And as a result, her profit has fallen by 117 pounds. If Emily changes to sales maximization, I've drawn a graph. She will go from the black PR and QR to the blue PS and QS. And you can see that the price will fall. The price falls because her target is now producing where AC equals AR. Personal computer sales have fallen. We're asked to work out the percentage decrease. So I've got the percentage change equation written here. And you simply have to just plug in the numbers. So plug in the 2015 value of 276. And then the original value of 352.4 divided by the original one times that by 100. And we get that there has been a decrease of 21.48%, which is approximately A. One reason for the decrease, the decrease in demand, and I have tried to give a reason why, such as switching to mobile phones and tablets that might be more, more useful to households in certain contexts. Great, so I hope you found this video really useful. Let me know in the comments what other videos you'd, you'd like, and please subscribe if you want more of these videos. And um, thank you very much. Bye.